Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bikes. I'm your friend Amul Sektivel. In this video, we're going to see how we can enable parallel execution in our test automation framework. Since we have web, mobile, everything into the, in, the, in the same framework, it will be a little tricky to have the, your parallel execution, right? So, so before enabling the parallel execution, we have small refactorings. We will do that and then we'll switch to the parallel execution setup, right? Let's, instead of wasting a lot of time here, let's switch to the interview. Again, guys, uh, right, we thought, you know, we created web driver data, we created mobile driver data, two, two project classes, and this having only two values. You guys notice we are using builder pattern to build this, but the problem here is when we initially build, uh, you know, thought about building this uh, project, we have a lot of fields and we want some of the fields to be uh, optional, right? So at the time, the it makes a lot of sense uh, to use a builder pattern. But if you guys notice this time we have only two two um, class variables and both of them are mandatory so it also makes very good sense to keep a all our human concept here instead of the builder pattern right um, so i can go here and instead of creating this via builder pattern you can simply say new web driver data and you can pass only these two values right it, it makes complete sense for me to replace the builder pattern um, with uh, just uh, all, uh, all our human constructor. Again, our, our classes are still immutable, right? Because we don't expose any setter methods. And if you notice, this looks much, much neat, right? The same thing, we'll do it for the mobile driver data. So remove this and we'll add all our human constructor. We'll, we'll, right? And let's go here. And instead of doing all this, we'll tell new mobile driver data and then we'll pass these values, right? So for now, we are hard coding this. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, we also need to pass the mobile remote mode, right? Where you want to run your mobile test. Right? Let's also remove this, right? Good. So now this looks much, much neat. But the problem is, whatever the code we have written, we are writing uh, the driver.quit here, but most probably this has to be here, right? In the quit driver methods. So if it has to be here, I have to make this driver as a, as a static one, right? So maybe let's let me expose this as public static uh, web driver driver right and here instead of doing all this we can simply say driver and then here I can say driver that so the problem here is this is not thread safe okay I have made a separate video on why static variables you know are are common uh, commonly across between multiple uh, threads. Uh, I leave that in the description. If you haven't watched that, please do watch that. But the problem here is it is shared between threads. The real problem is this uh, variable will be read and written. Okay. So sometimes this, if this variable is only read, then there will be no problem. But here we will be updating this driver with the new values, right? So we are writing and reading. So this is a problem. So, uh, so we have to fix this. How we can fix this? The easiest way is to use a thread local to fix this. So let's let's assume that we want to introduce thread local here. So what I can do, I can say private uh, static thread local and uh, web driver, right? There is a thread local and we're going to add, uh, let's say the name as uh, thread and school local, whatever, and new thread local, right? Good. It's all good now. Again, it, it also makes complete sense for me to keep it as a file, right? And what I can do is, whenever you create a driver, you just assign it to this particular thread local. So what I can do, I can simply say thread local dot set, right? And then I can set whatever the driver I have created so far, okay? Whenever I want to get the driver, I can just use thread local dot get, okay? So instead of, you know, um, having this here, it makes complete sense for me because I I cannot give a direct access. If you can make it as a public, it will work. But with threads, uh, you know, when you keep a class static member as public, you cannot control it properly. So it makes complete sense for me to expose a getters and setters, right? Instead of uh, having a, a public one, we can have uh, getters and setters for this. So I can say a public uh, static. If somebody is calling get driver method, I want to do is I'm going to return them thread local dot get. That's it, right? And I'm going to return them, right? 
the same way it also makes complete sense for me to have a void set driver method that is used to set values to it so it's going to be web driver and driver if somebody is going to pass me this i'll say thread local dot set and then whatever the driver that's coming i'm going to set it so what we are going to do is using this thread local whenever you create some uh, driver instance you just pass it to this okay if you pass it to the set driver method this thread local will take care of uh, handling the thread safety okay you don't have to worry about it so i have made an entire video on what is thread local how this internally works and everything i leave that in the description if you haven't watched it please do watch that okay now if you notice this will make our code really good maybe in your test class or somewhere else you want to call the get driver method you can simply call uh, this driver class dot get driver but if you guys notice this class is doing a lot of things okay so I, what i'm doing i'm going to cut this whole code okay because this is separate right this this entirely deals with managing the drivers for thread safety so i am going to create a new class here uh, named as driver manager right and let me add this and let me place this here okay it also makes complete sense for me to keep it as a final and then private so you can also use this. yeah so, so yeah that's all about it so if you guys notice um, a sonar lint is telling hey you are using thread local but if you don't call the remove method then there are a lot of problems okay if you want to understand what is that in all that you can click on more actions and then you can show the rule description as if you notice it you can cause some memory leaks and all that so it is better to use a remove method call the remove method for uh, you know with the name as unload so i also covered that yeah so what i'm going to do i'm also going to expose public static void unload and all it does is thread local dot remove right this is just for thread safety okay instead of setting this back to null we will call the remove method which will make sure that all these values gets removed without any problems okay so yeah so that's all about it and from here uh, you don't have to do all this okay uh, you don't have to expose this as a public one uh, once you create it web driver all i'm going to do is you know driver manager dot set driver and whatever the driver that i've created okay and wherever i want the driver the same way i will remove this and i'll copy this and wherever i want to quit it i can simply say driver manager dot get driver that's it so wherever you want the driver you just call driver manager dot get driver this is one time effort if you do this thread local will take care of handling thread safety for this particular variable okay so all your web driver instances will be now thread safe right this makes a lot of sense and uh, yeah that's all about it uh, but this is a very basic scenario right so in in test automation world this is okay if you have your test only dealing with web let's say all my tests let's say my web tests are only dealing with web okay this is web test that is dealing with web but let's say if there is mobile test okay that is only dealing with mobile okay so that is dealing with mobile but there are some cases in real time where you want to do some operations in web you quit the browser and then you have to move to mobile okay and then do some operation but there are even more specific cases where you have to do something in web, web and then you have to switch to mobile you need to do some operations there in the native app and then you have to again switch back to web so these are different different use cases and this driver manager class will uh, you know in a position it has to be in a position to handle all these scenarios but for now it can only handle these two but if you want to switch between web and mobile do some operations and all it going to be little tricky we can handle that uh you know in the in the next video how, uh, we'll see how we can handle that okay i'll i'll see you guys in another great video until then tata bye bye from then see you guys bye bye